Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to take the wooden floor material that we made in the last video and add in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic lived in feel. Before we get started though, let's take a look at the textures that we'll be using during this tutorial. Um, we're gonna be using floor smudges type A medium 001 uh, and also gun scratches 003. Uh, both of which I already have saved to my hard drive and I'll be including a link to them underneath the video. Okay, let's move over to Max. So this is our scene from last time. Um, if you'll remember we used the um, material converter to bring this material into Max um, and it, it set up all the uh, textures for us. We did make a slight alteration to the gloss map to give us more control um, over its effect on the on the final material, um, but other than that, the rest was done by our converter. Uh, in this video, it's going to be a little bit more in depth. We'll be we'll be working with the nodes directly. Um, so yeah, but before we get started on that, I just want to go over exactly what it is we're about to do. To add the smudges, we're going to take our original gloss map, where the brighter areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the darker areas are more rough and diffuse. Um, and then we're going to bring in our smudges texture. Now we'll be taking the information from the smudges texture, taking the brighter areas, and then subtracting that information away from our uh, gloss map. This will um, mean that where there's smudges on the floor, the that there will be less reflectivity, less shininess, um, which will give us exactly the effect that we want. Uh, and then finally, when we have our combined uh, gloss map, we'll feed that back into our shader. Right, so let's get started on our nodes. Um, it's the gloss map that we're gonna be working on first. So let's highlight these uh, normal and displacement maps, just drag them down here, just to give us some more room to work with. And I'll move these across here a little bit. Yeah. So now if I click on the render button, bring up our little render view here, um, I'll stop it and instead, no, stop it. <laughs> and instead, start the interactive render then we'll be able to see the changes we're making as we go along. There we go. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually add in another shader, and I'll show you why in just a moment. I'm gonna bring in a Corona light material. Let's just call this preview, like so. And then with the floor plane selected, I'm going to assign this new material to our floor plane and you'll notice our render changes to just be a, a blank emission plane. Now the reason we've done this is I want to be able to preview the textures that we're bringing in as they'll appear or as they'll be mapped to, uh, to our floor plane. So if I right mouse button just underneath the gloss map here and then go to maps, general and then bitmap, I can then navigate to where I've stored my materials on my hard drive which in this case is here. And then I'm gonna to go to floor smudges type A medium 001. <laughs> um, and then we've got a couple of options there and it's the it's the overlay 16 bit one that I'm going to use. Um, with, with 16 bit textures, there's there's greater color depth and you get you get more more, more detail out of the texture. Um, so it, in a lot of cases, it's, it's the one to go for. Now before hitting open though, we've got a little gamma section down here and by default it's set to automatic, but we're gonna override that and you'll see the texture brightens up when we click that. As a general rule, when um, you're importing textures, if they are going to contribute towards the color of the material, typically obviously the color texture, and also the reflection texture, um, you'd leave that on automatic because you want Corona to apply any gamma corrections from your scene to those textures. But if you're dealing with a texture that does not contribute to the color, such as a gloss map, we want to override that, so it just uses a gamma of one, and that way we get the full detail from the texture. So with that selected, I'll hit open. And then we have our smudges texture imported and I'm gonna name it so we can uh, keep track of what we're doing. And now we'll see why we've brought in this preview node. If I drag this down to the text map input, on the render there, you'll see the smudges on our floor, like the, the scaling and the mapping and, and, and how, they'll, the, how they'll affect the material. So if I double click on smudges and go to the tiling section, you'll notice at the moment 
if you remember the size of the floorboards, these footprints would be tiny. Um, so unless this is a floor with a bunch of toddlers running around, we, we need to adjust that to make it look right. I think a value of about 0.6 should work pretty well for us. Yeah. Yeah, that works good. Uh, and I'm also going to slightly adjust this offset because I want I want a chunk of uh, smudges to be in about this sort of area because um, th th there's a a large amount of reflection going on in that area, and it will allow us to judge if we're uh, if we're setting the material up correctly. Okay, so if I feed in our gloss map instead. Um, it's kind of hard to see because it's a gloss map, <laughs> um, but you can just about make out the the uh, the floorboards there if you look really closely. <laughs> uh, and what we need to do is subtract the footprints from that, because um, as I mentioned earlier, with a gloss map, the uh, brighter parts are more reflective and shiny, and the darker areas are more diffused and rough. Yeah, um, and we want the the footprints to to be less reflective than the than the original gloss map. Because that's the way it would, that's the that's the way it looks uh, on a real floor. So to do that, first of all, we're going to have to invert our smudges map because at the moment the the smudges are white, um, and for a gloss map, uh, we, we're going to want that the other way around. So if I go down to the output section here and click invert, you'll now see it's uh, it, it, it's it's resembling the gloss map already. You, you can see that the smudges are now the darker areas. So if I bring in a, uh, what's it called, <laughs> a Corona Mix node, I will name that smudges as well. And now what I'm going to do is feed the smudges into the top input of our Mix node and the gloss map into the bottom. Double click on that and also feed that into our texture map input on the, uh, on the preview shader. And then if I change the mix type to multiply, now a multiply node takes the darker areas from our smudges texture and uh, essentially subtracts it from our from our original texture, i.e. our gloss map. And you'll see it's starting to have an effect. Yeah, you can see now that the the footprints are being overlaid onto that material, which is exactly what we want. So if I now feed this into the uh, the gloss input of our shader um, and assign this back to the floor, we should get the sort of result we're after. I say should, because <laughs> you never know. No, that's working well, that's working good. You're starting to see the smudges appearing on our floor. Um, obviously, the effect is way too strong, but we can control that with this mix amount. If I set that to zero, you'll then see uh, well, the, the effect is gone. We're back to our original gloss map. So zero would be no effect, and one will be kind of the, the maximum effect we'd want. But we're probably gonna go for a value of about 0.4, I think that will work pretty well for us. It's kind of hard to tell on a preview render, um, but yeah, I think that will work nicely. So with that done, I'm going to reassign our emission here, disconnect that, uh, and we can start working on the next section of our imperfections, which is going to be the, uh, the, the scratches, the gun scratches. So let's start by bringing that map in. I'm going to go to Maps, General, and then Bitmap again. And just like before, find my material, um, which sometimes is easier said than done. There we go. And it's overlay 16 that we need again. Uh, we do have a lot of options with the scratches. There's displacement maps, normal maps, and a variety of overlays. Uh, and they, they have their different purposes. But um, for this, I found the, uh, the overlay texture does work best. So with that selected, I'll again hit override, because we don't want any gamma corrections applied to this one either and then I'll hit open. And then if I feed that into our emission uh, shader, we can see the scratches as they'll appear on our floor. So, like before, we're gonna need to adjust the scaling a little bit. But first I'll call it scratches. And, uh, yeah, the, the tiling uh, in this case is, is the other way around from the smudges. The smudges were too small and we need to make them bigger. These scratches are too large, we need to make them smaller, so we need to increase the tiling. I think a, va a value of around three should work pretty good. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, I won't mess with the offset this time because it's. Uh, I think that will look fine as is. What we will need to do though 
is invert the texture again. Um, in fact, no, I'll, I'll leave that. Uh, the reason I was about to invert the texture is by default with a bump map, the white areas will bump out of a surface rather than cut in. And obviously with scratches, we want them cutting in, um, but there's actually a, probably a better way to do that. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll leave that as is. Instead, I'm gonna feed the scratches into the additional bump value of this Corona normal mode, which is a really handy uh, handy input to have. Uh, with, with some other renderers, this would take a couple of more nodes, but uh, with Corona, it's just this one, which is good. Uh, and you'll see when you open up the node, there's this additional bump mapping uh, section here, which we'll be adjusting in a moment. But for now, we're gonna get rid of this preview shader because we don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna reassign the floor material back to our floor. And now as it starts to render, we can see our scratches appearing. Um, definitely too strong. It looks like a bunch of puppies have been running around scratching up the floor, which isn't really the effect we're going for. We're going for quite a, a subtle effect here. So um, first of all, as I mentioned, the scratches are going in the wrong direction. So we need to fix that. And that's very easy. You just change this bump mapping to a negative value. So if I go minus one, for example, the scratches are now cutting into the floor. Yeah, which is exactly what we want. But now we need to bring down the strength. So all we need is a is a lower value. So if I go for minus point zero five, I actually think it'd be about a point zero two we'd want in the in the finished one. But it's so hard to see in the preview uh, that we'll leave it at point uh, zero five at the moment. But remember that's negative point zero five that we want. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of hard to even see in the preview. But I think I, I do think that will work well for us. So I'm just uh, neaten up these nodes a little bit, like so. And I would say that's our our finished material done. So let's um, I'll stop this render now. I'm going to go to my render settings, uh, up the resolution a little bit, and now I'm going to run a final render. Um, I'll pause the recording while that while that does its job. Okay, so we have our finished render, um, and it's it's looking pretty good. Um, I'd possibly raise the smudges just a little bit, like the effect. Uh, I think I had it at a sort of point four five, um, maybe five five would be would be better. Um, the scratches uh, maybe a, just a a little bit less, but for the purpose of a tutorial, uh, I I think this works pretty well. Yeah, good render. So in summary, we've taken our wooden floor material from the first video and added in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor more realistic lived-in feel. 